Hello and welcome to the 14th podcast uh, for the Motor Doc podcast. And um, as promised, this week we're going to discuss a little bit more into the relationship of vibration to energy consumption. Now, uh, pardon the, the lateness, I, I went ahead and decided I was going to, to finally, after decades, uh, do the Certified Energy Manager certification and happy to say uh, last night passed the exam. So uh, sometime, as soon as I get the certificate from them, uh, I will be a CEM on top of a CMRP and whatever other initials I wish to <laughs> put at the end. There's, there's an end goal in mind, but in any case, um, let's get into the energy discussion. So in this uh, image you see to my, I believe, right this time, um, you'll see uh, a setup that we have in the lab. Now this is for just doing some in-house testing before we do the lab testing. What I'm going to show you, uh, you know, just to just to get the the mystery um, out of sorts, is um, that no, it it, it uh, for what we've run into in the field with what some of the claims are to the data that we've collected and looked at in the field um, doesn't match some of the claims uh, that are being put out there. Uh, does that mean it's not possible? No, it, it actually is quite possible. As a matter of fact, we have solved it uh, and we're now gathering together the information for the paper we'll be giving this summer. In the meantime, we're going to give you some ideas as to the direction associated with it and this is why we have this particular setup. Uh, we had a version of the electrical signature and analyzer set up so we'll take in direct vibration data. There were some ups and downs, there's still a few hiccups in it, but it, uh, it does do a pretty good job. So in any case, um, this is the setup and let's go ahead and start talking about the data. Talk about the data, there we go. Um, so here's the data we got with the top one being uh, drive end data. And by the way, the locations uh, in that image of the vibration uh, the accelerometers is not accurate for, for the study we're doing. So the top one is our vertical. Uh, this one here is horizontal. Um, the motor is bolted to a mass larger than its weight. The weight for the motor is 10 kilograms. Uh, per the catalog. So I'm going to show you this one and then we're going to apply it real time or well as real time as we can get. I'm going to run the calculations separately. But uh, here's how we approach just looking at this. Now we're going to make the assumption because we can, we, we did get uh, virtually identical readings that this is the same on both the drive end and opposite drive end. There is a bearing issue going on but we're going to ignore that. And that's one of the nice things about pulling things out as an FFT. In this case, <clears throat> we're going to look at just the one time RPM, obviously not misaligned. This is all in balance. You can see in the vertical, we are at 0 0.002 inches per second. In the horizontal, we're at 0 0.116 inches per second. And here, it's showing us at one watt or one point zero zero one kilowatts at twenty four point eight seven one hertz. Now, all of that is important information, uh, and as well the mass. So, what you do basically is you have to first convert because it's in inches per second. You have to convert over to meters per second. Why? Because we need to be able to look at this from an energy standpoint. Conversion factor, if I'm doing inches per second to that, is 0 0.0254 meters times the inches. Um, you then calculate the kinetic energy in joules, and that's 0.5 times the mass in kilograms times the velocity squared. Then you then calculate the kinetic energy times the specific frequency and that gives us our watts. Now once I have watts I just converted to kilowatts by dividing by a thousand. 
So we are going to ignore the damping effects and some of the other things that will be available in the final equation, but this gives us a good ballpark as to whether it's feasible. So when we do take this, we're going to say, um, we're going to take the horizontal reading first, because big number, uh, bigger number, so that's 0.116 inches per second. When we convert that to meters per second, that's 0 0.002946 meters per second. I'm going out that far just to give it every ounce that I can, uh, or gram. Um, then we then we take that and we uh, explore the. We take a look at the 10 kilo, uh, kilograms and we put that in, and that comes out to 4.34 times 10 to the minus fifth minus five joules. That is then converted over when we multiply by 24.871 hertz. Now we're running the motor at about uh, 50 hertz, so um, it's an 1800 RPM motor. So that comes out to 0 0.00108 watts, or 1.8 to the times 10 to the minus 6 kilowatts. Now if we assume 24-7 operation, that comes out to be about 0 0.00946 kilowatt hours per year. Now, remember this, it's a three quarter horsepower electric motor, so, and it's, it's relatively light, so not a lot being seen from that. And to top it off, we are well, well under um, the actual unbalanced value here of running speed. Um, which comes out to be uh, 8.76 kilowatt hours per year. So that actually has uh, a real value to it. And we're doing energy monitoring on it right now so with, with, uh, with our new technology um, in, involved in looking at power quality and, and how that relates to reliability and everything else. It's a hybrid AI basically uh, that we've developed. So we're testing that now, and we're watching the consumption of energy over time, and this is actually really accurate. So uh, although there's a few other things going on, like bearing issues and everything else. So we applied this across the whole system. We've looked at the overall losses, and yes, we're, we're matching up um, from the kilowatt perspective or the ESA part of it exactly. So uh, that kind of gives us our perspective now. So you say tiny motor. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this machine here. I don't know how the video is going to come out, but let's give it a shot. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's running a little slow and a little jumpy. Um, but in any case, we took this during the training class we did last week. Um, and just to put it into perspective, um, we took 42, 45 degree angle vibration uh, data sets. I didn't do any more than that for this, uh, but we're going to use that to give us an idea. So we're going to take a back plane and a front plane. We have an obvious unbalance, and we're going to go from there. So let's go ahead and take a look. So uh, here we are. Now I was able to look up this machine and we know that it comes out to 2,500 kilograms. So I have not done any of the math on this yet, so we're going to start right from scratch. But let's go ahead and get the data up. Of course, everything's a little delayed because things are going on in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this briefly. Okay, back into the game. So um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, this data here. Now this is on that machine. Um, nice thing is, you know, a little bit on balance shows up as a definitive one-time reading. So uh, let's go ahead. We're going to do this raw. I, I have not run this yet. So you'll see it in action. Now, good news is um, we have a running speed uh, 1200 RPM motor, so 19.681 hertz. Uh, yeah, it's running a little behind, but it's running into some issues with lubrication in there. 
Uh, this is actually post lubrication, so it's brought the kilowatts down a little bit on the losses associated with one of the bearings. It does have a roller bearing in the drive end along with that shiv and running it as long as we did, of course, there's going to be some noise there. So 19.81. Now we know that our kilowatts are 0.331 kilowatts. Now we're just going to look at the, um, the fact that we have uh, 0.286 inches per second. And the other one is going to be 0.289. So from the 45 degree angle, so we're going to call these both 0.289. So uh, we'll just say that I did the other side too. Um, so we ended up with that very, very close. So about 29 or something like that. Um, so in any case, we're going to use 0.289 for our calculations. So the first thing we need to do is take 0.289 and uh, multiply that by 0.0254 meters. So that gives me, you know what, let's pull up the calculator so you can at least watch it in action. So, um, or maybe not. It really did dog this thing down, didn't it? So let's go ahead and uh, calculator. Uh, Let's go ahead and do um, 0.289 times 0.0254, which gives me 0 0.00734 um, meters per second. So we have that. Now, uh, the next part of it is then. Um, taking that to get our kinetic energy or joules is going to be uh, where I'm going to do this a little backwards so we're going to take 0 0.00734 and we're going to go ahead and um, square it Okay, uh, and then uh, we're going to go by the mass, which I said was 2,500 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that by 0.5, so half of that. That's going to be joules, it's going to be 0 0.0673 joules. Okay, let me go ahead and pause this. I apologize for that. It appears that um, my computer is still complaining about all the things I have running in the background, but neither here nor there. So we have uh, 0 0.0673 joules. Um, this is just for one point. So 0 0.0673 joules times the RPM, which we said was, um, what did we say it was? Let's go back over here and say it is 19.681. 19.681. So that would be 1.325 um, watts. So um, the comparison is that we're measuring. 331 watts. So even if I take this and I say, okay, front, back, and then both the other readings, we're still going to be at about, um, uh, say, one and a half, so about six watts or 0 0.06, uh, I'm sorry, uh, about six watts or 0 0.006 kilowatts. So we are well, well, well under that value. So just taking one or two readings with continuous, even if we're taking triax on both ends, that number is very, very different. This is the actual energy being transmitted uh, so that we can measure it. Now, 
Can we get much closer? Absolutely, and that's that's the key um, to the study that we're doing. We've got a lot of field data coming in for that project. Uh, we're going to be looking at motors from relatively small to very large, uh, and we're taking all the data. So um, we'll see what happens. So in, in any case, just to give you an idea, I've seen some people come out with with numbers uh, at a conference, uh, one of the continuous monitoring vibration guys said, oh, look, we've got kilowatts, and they had, oh, bearing issue, and then when they told me how many kilowatt hours it was for the year, even at 8760, it was 125% of the entire machine's load. So that made no sense whatsoever. So beware when you see that stuff. You, add, In order to get a good, solid, accurate reading, you need to have some type of kilowatt meter taking a look at all of your losses. And the nice thing is with ESA, I can break that down into individual components. So that's one of the reasons why I stick to this as part of my energy studies. But in any case, as promised, we are going to be continuing. As a matter of fact, in next week, we're going to look at the same data and see what we can come up with using motion amplification. And once we start down that path, I'll be able to explain a little bit more about what we're going to do. And we're going to give you that for Christmas and New Year's. So in any case, thank you very much for, for enjoying your time, um, and, or for <laughs> giving me your time. <laughs> Sorry, again, still a little squirrely. That was a lot of math yesterday, and I hate math. Uh, but in any case, as you know, we, we unfortunately do have to do some of that when we come down to this. We're going to have this set up so that we have an algorithm that we can present to the industry in the end that can be used so that we are looking at something more accurate. End purpose in mind is that we're able to take and begin t uh, putting the energy and emissions aspect to any of our predictive requirements or condition-based requirements for our customers uh, and your clients as well. So in, in the end, the idea is to add that KPI uh, that ties our maintenance and reliability groups up to our uh, C-suite. In any case, have a great time. Uh, in the meantime, uh, in the next couple of days, I will do a quick show off of the energy project we have going on um, that you can't quite hear in the background but we, the monitoring uh, system that we have uh, going together, we're doing some tests with it on the bench. Um, we will not show off the AI portion yet, uh, but this system is going to be released right after January 1st. We've got to put our literature together this, uh, this month, and it's going to be a cost-effective way of taking a look at individual systems down to an electric machine, a transformer, or incoming power. So in any case, thank you very much for your time, and we will discuss more later.